morning, all. You're listening to the Game Day Warm-Up on TalkSport. Max Rushton, Charlie Baker with you until 11 today. Peter says, Max, you have a microphone. No need to shout all the time. We do yeah, shout, We Charlie, do shout. There's a lot of shouting on this show. Shout it's just how it works. Much. Yeah, we just can't help it. it. We're, asked, we're asked to do that. Um, we're excited. We're excited yeah, about the, the weekend's football. That's just how it works. Yeah, that's what our job is to do that, isn't it? Uh, anyway, uh, pleased to say uh, we, uh, we have a guest in the studio. We don't often get guests in the studio. No. Um, in fact, we would normally have to beg people to come on this programme. <laughs> um, uh, but um, box-to-box midfielder, half-decent yeah. left foot. I have watched some footage oh, really? Arsenal okay. season ticket holder. <laughs> Perhaps less importantly for our audience, but potentially the next Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer, is here. Hello, Sir Keir. Hello, thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. Um, very welcome. Um, I don't know. I don't, you sort of turned up about fifteen minutes ago. Having listened to the last fifteen minutes of this program, are you, uh, I, I didn't are you regretting your decision? <laughs> well, I've been listening for the last hour. Actually, there's quite a lot. Right. Yeah, it's a lot, isn't okay. it? There's, there's a lot, lot of stuff. Did yeah. you enjoy the Go Get It? Did you feel like you were really ready for the day after you'd heard Go Get It the, shouted a lot? Go Get It. Yeah, I was practicing with, with my shouting in the car on the way in. Oh, nice. Very That's good. good. That's good. good. Now, now a little bit. Just you, a little bit of stuff about the Palace game later on, obviously. Oh, yeah, well, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going? And you are going to... You're going. I'm going straight from here, yeah. I'm going to go home, pick up my boy, who's 15, and uh, then we're going to the game, yeah. And you love going, but you love playing, and I'm totally with you. I, I am going to play till I can't move, and it is, there's no greater thrill than playing. There are some pictures of you in the papers playing, and when I, <laughs> when I play football, I feel like... Dimitar Berbatov and then when I watch it it isn't quite like that and I don't know how you feel when you see pictures of yourself playing football in the in the newspapers oh they're always terrible I mean that's the point um the people who turn up to take photos are not trying to get a decent one um so I know as soon as they're there that um what's going to happen the next day is uh, that you know take about two or three hundred pictures and then pick out the worst one (laughs) but I mean I've been playing since I was uh, Ten years old, I think I've played really? um, pretty well every week, um, missing very few weeks. Usually, I used to play back in the day, two or three games a week, but yeah. uh, now just uh, one game, 90 minutes, eight aside, on a Sunday with all my mates, people I've played football with over the years, people I grew up with. Yeah. It, it's a complete, or it's supposed to be until these photographers turn up, <laughs> yeah. it's supposed to be a complete getaway from, from politics, that sort of walking on the pitch. Because you know what it's like if you play football. You walk on the pitch, nothing else matters. Yeah. And certainly where we are now, um, the only rule is, you know, don't be an arse. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's, do you get targeted? that's the rule on this show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do you get targeted, Kia? Uh, n- no. I mean, I, I, other than I've been targeted for years by the people I play with. That's the nature of the... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what you, I mean, what is brilliant about playing football um, in the way I do now with just mates along the way is that these are people I've known for years and years um, who knew me before politics. Nobody gives a stuff what you do for a living when you walk on a football pitch. Mm. Um, And quite often over the years, everybody who's played amateur football knows this, you will have played with people that you don't even know their second name. You don't know what they do. You know, little Andy, uh, French G. You know, we we had a fella for years who played for us called Blocker for obvious reasons. And nobody actually knew what his name was. No. And then we got invited to... Do you have, do you have a nickname? Do, do, um, you, do, do you have a nickname? Do they, are you Rodders? Because I know that's your middle name. <laughs> no, I'm not. So, I don't even start suggesting Or Dave. That. Rodders. Yeah. Is it, or that's Dave. Not. That's a great... What a great... What a great... It, oh, yeah. What a great football nickname that is for you, Dave. It, it's bad enough with the guys I play with as it is, without you suggesting um, uh, little extras for them. There we are. Thanks very much. You, I, I apologise. Um, so you play with your mates and you go, you go to the Emirates with your mates. And... and like, I have friends who have proper jobs, not quite as proper as, you know, potentially running the country or being the leader of the opposition. But And I've known them since I was small, and I can't take them seriously. But I know they're good at what they do. But, like, do your friends go, hang on a second, mate, you can't be... You could lead the country. That's yeah. ridiculous. Well, again, when we go to football, it's, I go with um, the one of my very best friends, his son, my son, two or three other very close friends. We got five tickets up in the upper stand yeah. at Arsenal. There's about, I suppose, probably 15 of us now get together. We go to the pub. We have the usual banter. Nobody really talks about politics. Everybody, you know, before the game, it's absolute classic. Everybody talking near nonsense. Um, all the predictions about the score, who's yeah. going to score, et cetera, et cetera. Same jokes every and, week. And then yeah. same jokes every week. Um, they sound better some weeks. Um, <laughs> and then then we all sort of wander down to the game. So it's it's very non-political. It's, it's lots of people that I've known for a very long time. And it is a complete getaway from politics for me. Mm. 
And I'm in the stands as well. And I love. I mean, we've had the same season tickets well since the uh, stadium opened at Arsenal, and so. Um, you know, all, we know all the people in the seats in front of us, around us. You know, you got people there that you just sort of feel like you've lived half your life with, yeah. <laughs> gone through these amazing experiences with, um, who just turn up in the stands and everybody knows each other. So my my question would be to you about that, and I often think this about public life, is why why would you want to give that up? Potentially have to give that up completely. To, you seem to have a very happy family life, a very ha- uh, a very uh, a job you love, and and all the and a life that you enjoy. So why would you potentially want to give that up completely to run the country? That is almost that's a version of the conversation I had with the guy I go to football with, yeah. one of my best friends. Who, when I was thinking, should I go from law into politics? He said a version of why the hell would you do that? Um, and give all this up. Yeah. Um, and, and my wife, my wife was sort of uh, looking at adverts at legal jobs and sort of ringing them, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Uh, uh, circling them, and putting them in front of me, um, because you know I've always wanted to play my part in changing our country for the better, and that is a very important thing to me. Um, and that is why I'm doing what I'm doing. That's why I got into politics in the first place, and why. I want us to win that election. I do want to protect what I can of the sort of ordinary life, if you like, because it means a huge... Being able to go... Being able to play football with guys I've known for years, going to football with my son, yeah. one of my best friends and his son and very close friends, that is that is guttural to me. It matters yeah. so much. I want to protect that for as long as possible mm. um, and, you know, get that balance right. I mean, look, People do it in different ways. I'm quite protective about my family as well. So, you know, we don't name our children in public, for example. Yeah. My boy's 15, my girl's 13. We don't name them. We don't do photo shoots with them because I'm trying to protect that part of their lives mm-hmm. in particular. They go to You're not all going to jump on the one show any minute, like bring the whole family <laughs> on the one show. Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> We've all seen the back garden of number 10. We know it's big enough for a big party. Oh, so yeah. it'd be great for a kick around. I was going to say a little five-a-side pitch <laughs> exactly. in there. Be absolutely Could lovely. work. Um, before we get yelled at, uh, Keir, I've got some sort of serious-ish questions to ask you. Um, um, the football regulator, right? You support yeah. the idea. You want football. You've said you want football to be fairer. Um, I think from a fan's point of view, look at what's happened to say Reading right now. We both support. I'm a Cambridge fan. Charlie's a Torquay fan. Like, yeah. Luckily, we're well run at the moment, but we have no power over it. What do you mean by you want football to be fairer and, and how can the regulator help? So I think the regulator is important. Um, there was a sports-led um, fan review, as you know, that Tracy Crouch, a Tory MP, did. She's good, by the way. There's a lot of cross-party yeah. talking about this. I, look, the, the problems, I think, that we're trying to address are sort of straightforward and pretty well understood. The smaller clubs that are struggling, I mean, it, I was very struck by Barry, if you remember, went under. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, they're back now, obviously, but um, they went under. Wigan struggled. Other clubs have really, really struggled. Um, so we can't just let that happen. Once you lose a club, particularly, let's say, I mean, Barry, the club came back, but if you lose something like that, they're massive for a community to lose their club. You know, it may be the one place that everybody identifies with. Uh, Stevenage, for example, when they got to Wembley, half of Stevenage yeah, <laughs> went yeah. to Wembley. This is this is sort of really matters in terms of the identity of places around the country. So we can't just let that go as if it's something casual. That's not just about football. That's about a sense of being, of place, of, you know, people, wherever they are, being proud of um, where they're from and, yeah. and being able to show it through their football. So there's that side of it. I think we haven't quite recovered from COVID for many clubs. Um, again, I went to a number of clubs during COVID just to see how they were getting on. Lots of them were doing community work, by the way, putting stuff back in during COVID. But they were, you know, the smaller clubs, desperate for their gate money. Without the gate money, they were really, really struggling. They haven't quite got over that. And then the other bit at the other end is we've got to make sure we don't go down the Super League route um, mm-hmm. where, you know, six clubs also break away from the top very lucrative for them but really really damaging for football in the UK so they're all the reasons I'm in favour of a regulator the government hasn't yet put its proposals on the table in terms of the actual legislation but in principle we support it for all those reasons um what do you think of nation state ownership I'm I'm conscious you don't want to lose every vote (laughs) in Newcastle and half of Manchester in the next two minutes but I can't believe that countries own our football clubs let alone countries with terrible human rights records yeah I mean this is a Cause of concern. I mean, I've got to be careful. I'm an Arsenal fan, so sort of saying that other clubs that are 
uh, in the battle with us uh, yeah. shouldn't have um, the backing they've got is is a bit uh, easy to say. Um, but look, it is a cause. I think it's something really again for the regulator. Obviously, you've got the sort of the question of whether someone's a fit and proper person, and that should be within the regulator's realm. Um, that doesn't quite work for a country, but I think it is something regulators need to to look at. But look, it'd be the easiest thing as an Arsenal fan to sort of say all other clubs should lose mm-hmm. their funding, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, that would work for us, but it probably wouldn't work for anyone else. Um, pr- probably, probably the most serious question that I have, and is a very sensitive topic, and I understand that whatever you say, you, you, you can't say the right answer. Russia was suspended from all football, right, for invading Ukraine. Um, you away from FIFA were really quick to act there. And I appreciate it is not the same, what's happening with Israel and Gaza. But a lot of people are asking why Israel hasn't received a, a similar sanction. You know, 23,500 Palestinians are dead. 16,000 of them are women and children. And, you know, from, from in our privileged position to just, you know, all we see is terrible footage on social media. But it's totally, we've all got children. It's totally heartbreaking. I, like, I can't bear seeing it. But I know it's complicated. Do you think there should be similar sanctions? Look, I don't think you can equate the situation in Ukraine with the situation in the Middle East. They're two very different conflicts mm-hmm. um, and should be, have to be treated very different. And they will have different ways of being um, resolved. As so far as Ukraine is concerned, um, that is uh, Putin aggression and it has to be resolved by Putin being defeated. That is my absolutely firm um, position. The position in the Middle East is much more complicated in Gaza. I think we're all shocked um, by what we're seeing in terms of the sheer number of people who've been killed in Gaza, particularly the percentage of them that are children. And you can't look at those images, um, particularly if you've got kids, um, and not want anything other than for the conflict to end. And therefore, we do need a ceasefire. It's got to be sustainable. Uh, And that means that we need to get uh, a sort of road path to stop the hostility now, to have those hostages released. There are still 150 or so Mm. people being held at gunpoint um, to get desperately needed humanitarian aid in. But more than that, a politic open up a political route to a solution. So um, they are very, very different situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I totally appreciate that. And, and what happened October the seventh was obviously just, just absolutely was devastating. A, a, as attack. well, yeah. Um, one other question. Actually, it's interesting when you look at history, right? Actually, Russia's a bit of an outlier. There's not many teams have been banned, right? There was South Africa, and there was, uh, but but really, you know, Rwanda wasn't after the genocide there, you know. So, so actually, it is a bit of an outlier. I wanted to ask you a question about. Rwanda. It's in the news this week about asylum seekers being sent there, and the, the, it was went through Parliament. It's still got to go through the Lords. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here. My understanding is that the Supreme Court in the UK, British judges said asylum seekers were not safe in Rwanda. And I wonder, in a footballing sense, and maybe this is too tangential or too big a jump, do you feel uncomfortable that when you go to the Emirates, you see visit Rwanda <laughs> yeah, on the sleeves yeah, yeah. Of, of of the Arsenal? Well, I thought this might be coming up. Um, look. Um, The Supreme Court, so that's our highest court, the best judges that we've got, all looked at the evidence of what happens to um, asylum seekers who are processed in Rwanda and decided 5-0, all five judges, that um, it was unsafe for people to be sent there. And um, that was the ruling of the court. Now, um, Arsenal obviously got Visit Rwanda on their shirt, but that is a... I mean, you, you know visiting Rwanda on a voluntary have you, basis. Have you visited and Rwanda? Visited, I haven't. No, um, no. Uh, uh, but, but Despite visit, all the constant being told to visit Rwanda. Well, the only, the, people, the only people that go to Rwanda from here are home secretaries, I think. But that's the only person <laughs> the Prime Minister's actually managed to get to Rwanda. But look, the, Rwanda costs, has cost us £400 million already not to send anyone yeah. to Rwanda. N- nobody wants these boats coming across the channel. That's got to be stopped. I very strongly uh, feel that the way to stop them is to stop the gangs that are putting them in the boats in the first place. Before I went into politics, I was the chief prosecutor, so I ran the prosecution service for England and Wales for five years, and we had to take down gangs that were doing um, terrorist conspiracies, that were doing drugs and gun running across borders. It's not dissimilar. And we managed to take those gangs down. I will never accept that the people that are running this vile trade of putting in people into small boats can't be taken down mm. by law enforcement. And that's, that's where I'd put my political... Practically um, try and uh, change it uh, that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, you're listening to Talk Sports. Uh, Sakir Starmer, a leader of opposition, is uh, with us. Uh, it's Max and Rushton and Charlie Baker with you to 11. Uh, Sakir has agreed to play one of our games, um, which we're very excited about. And you'll find out which one against a legend as well, an Arsenal legend. Um, and we'll do that in just a second. You're listening to the warm up on Talk Sport. Sakir, the, the election expert, uh, John Curtis, said there might be a really low turnout because both leadership candidates are boring. I mean, I get called boring a lot and I don't, <laughs> I don't care. But do you care? Look, I've been called so many names yeah. uh, in the course of my professional career, particularly since I went into politics. Um, if boring is the best anyone can come up with, then uh, I'll take that any day of the week. Yeah, I agree. I, um, I, I take boring. Also, I mean, the other thing I'd just say, I, I obviously go around the country all the time. I love talking to people in their community, where they work, um, just absorbing what they've got to say to me and letting them talk to me in any way they like. And nobody yet in... I've been in politics nine years. Nobody has said, I'll tell you what, um, I want... Uh, can you tell me a joke? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Or, or what I want from a Prime Minister is someone who's really entertaining. Yes. I mean, we have actually tried that version of being a Prime Minister and it didn't really work we, very well. We've tried that around the world. <laughs> um, it's Arsenal Crystal Palace today. Yeah. Uh, Arsenal at home, struggling to score goals. Uh, Kai Havertz doesn't seem to be the answer. Jay Zeus is probably back today. What do you think Arsenal need to do to, be, to beat Crystal Palace today? Well, I'm going from here home to Kentish Town where I live pick up my son and then we're going to the game so 12.30 kick off I think he'll we've got to win I mean we've just had a little blip there with the last um, few games um, so we've got to win this one I think he'll start with Jesus up front I think he will do that um, they've had a bit of time off so a bit of time to regroup mm. so um, you know I think it's and, and then it's getting some of those other players, Odegaard, etc., just really, really... Odegaard's a brilliant player, yeah, yeah, and yeah. just getting him ticking over, getting those, uh, you know, that confidence, really. I mean, they can play brilliantly, Arsenal. The just last few games, there's been a sort of um, lack of confidence in there. So I'm looking for that to come back this afternoon. Did you see, you... Did you see Arteta uh, eating steak <laughs> off, a, off a spiky stick from Salt Bay? Would you, would you find yourself eating steak off a... <laughs> Salt Bay stick. Well, I've done a lot of things to try and get an Arsenal win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm, as a vegetarian, that might be a, oh, of course, a, a yeah. step too far. But you, listen, mm. if, it, if it's the 89th minute <laughs> and we're 1-0 really? down, then I might have to reach for that steak sure. stick. Okay. But, um, must hurt. Must yeah. hurt knowing that Ange, Ange would never go to Salt Bay. That must hurt. <laughs> to, know, to know that. Can I, um, I, 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 we were told that you, you're, you claim that your son is responsible for signing Declan Rice. Is that... Correct. Yeah, so um, what happened was we went to um, West Ham away um, last season, and uh, which didn't go so well for Arsenal. Um, and met Declan Rice afterwards, and uh, I had a, you know the usual thing a program um, which my boy wanted to sign, and yeah. obviously slipped the contract just under the program, <laughs> so that as Declan thought he was signing the program for my son, he was actually signing for Arsenal. Oh, that's how it all started. How it happened, the secret it, yeah. story, the untold story of how Declan Rice made it to us, and hasn't he been brilliant for us? Been absolutely, absolutely. Super I'm, player. I'm afraid the nickname oh. Dave is taking off on the text, <laughs> on the text board. <laughs> Dave or Rodders is taking off. Uh, oh, can you ask yeah. Dave if Arsenal should sign <laughs> Ivan Tony next? I'm not... I mean, uh, firstly, I don't think we're going to. I, I, okay. I, it doesn't look like we are. I think he's going to stay at Brentford. And, he, I mean, as you were discussing earlier on, I think, um, he hasn't played for a long time now. Yeah. So, for Arsenal, if we're going to sign a striker, and there's obviously a good case for that, it's got to be someone completely on their game. Because, you know, we're in, you know, it's January going into February. You can't have someone who's going to take a bit of time now to get adjusted. This is yeah, for this season. Now, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, my feeling is it probably won't happen. Um, but we just um, need... The, I mean, the, 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 the squad Arteta's got there is a real... That's the best squad I've seen for a long time. I've mm. watched a lot of Arsenal football for many, many years. It's a great, great squad. It's about confidence. It's probably one or two extra players with that, that striker role. Jesus is great, but he doesn't score enough goals. He's great. I mean, he wins balls. He shouldn't get anywhere near. Yeah. You know, you see the player and you think, there's no way he's winning that ball. But we Sounds just like need... he hates Gabriel Jesus, Charlie, to me. He's not having him. Why do you he's not having him so much. <laughs> Um, so can I ask you a question? I, I, you're six to one on to be the next prime minister. I wow. read somewhere that you've set up meetings with civil service servants ahead of taking power. Is that like organising the trophy parade before the final? Oh, complete opposite. Um, <laughs> I have to, every single time I'm with my shadow cabinet, my senior politicians, I have to drum into them 
um, the complacency is a killer. We've got to fight like we're five points behind, you know. It's 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 like those teams that are sort of um, up at half time and think they've just got to cruise through the second yeah. half only to get battered in the 90th minute. So we've got to fight like we're five points behind all of the way through. And that that's the mentality that we've got to keep going for as long as it takes to get through this. I can imagine it. you say to them, it's like when Wolves were 2-0 uh, up v Talk United in the Sherpa Van Trophy in 1988. <laughs> and, and, and we they, all remember and, that. And, and they booked their hotel yeah, for Wembley yeah. and then they oh, lost no. the second leg. Well... In nope. '87, Tottenham organised a Tottenham had a bus parade because they'd organised it, and there were there were big, you know, there were banners saying, yeah. "We we forgive you, Gary Mabbott." Like like that. That's what they had to do. Um, no, uh, no, no, we're not going down that. So we haven't made any right. plans at all. And um, uh, it's so much so that our daughter is 13. Um, asked me um, not so long ago, "If you do win the election, Dad," she said, "Are you going to move to Downing Street?" So I said, "Look, your mum and I haven't really discussed this." And then she said to me, really deadpan, just to let you know, I'm not coming. <laughs> this is my 13-year-old good. daughter. So that, that, yeah, that is, that's the me. lack yeah. of planning that we've got. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Um, if you do become prime minister, there will be millions of people who, who haven't voted for you, right? I mean, that's just the nature of yeah, things, tough, okay? Yeah. And, and a lot of them will be listening right now. So what would, you say to, what would you say to people who are, you know, I will never vote for you and who don't vote for you, but you could still get in? What would you say to them? Well, look, uh, what I would say is that, firstly, it is time for change. You know, undoubtedly, um, we need to change. Secondly, after 14 years, uh, the Tories have absolutely failed. I don't think anybody with their hand on their heart could say things are better now than they were 14 years ago. The Labour Party has changed. Uh, we're fundamentally different to the party that lost in 2019. And we've got a plan to make the country better. And, that, and it's that package, really, I think, that... Um, I hope people will listen to, reflect on, and uh, this sense that not nothing's really working, we've got to have change, is very powerful, and um, it's for us to set out the change that we will make. Are you worried that Spurs fans won't vote for you? Yeah, that's a shame, yeah. especially now you've been on this show. Yeah, yeah. well, what, what, a, what a mistake. Well, look, no, no, actually, the, the, let, the, let, let me tell you a secret. I mean, as you know, there was I've been battled to get Sue Gray in as my chief of staff. There was a lot of coverage about it. Um, mm. And Sue and I get on very well. That's why I wanted her. She's a phenomenal woman, but she's a Spurs fan. Oh, so <laughs> it's, come, it's being introduced into the office, yeah, you see. Yeah. As more Actually, and more people are quietly coming up to me saying, oh, I'm a Spurs fan as well. Football is tribal. Politics is tribal. It does, it does create as much uh, anger and division as, as each other. Does, does one help you cope with the other one? I, look, I do think there's similarities. I mean, first it helped me cope because I can step out of politics into football I think there's, um, you know, real similarities. When I go this afternoon, there's going to be two sets of fans, Arsenal and Palace. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, and it's a binary game. You either win or you don't win. Um, you know, nobody wants a draw. So you... And politics is the same. It's quite tribal. And um, and in the end, it's pretty binary. You either win or you don't. We haven't won for 14 years. Mm. Um, that is futile and we've got to win. So there's that mentality of winning. If you take Prime Minister's questions, which is the highlight of the week, um, yeah. in a sense, it, there's a bit of football there because there's a lot of noise. You've got two sides mm. shouting for their particular player. Um, and, you know, as I stand up to ask my questions, there's sort of the away fans. Yeah. <laughs> Boo! Go yeah. break his legs! Yeah. Break his and, legs! And then there's my lot behind me. And then it's the re role reversal when Rishi Sunak is There's uh, a question from Haverford West. <laughs> yeah. Jeff coming in, but... <laughs> who's it to? Who's, who's it to? <laughs> yeah. um, um, now, you have agreed to do one of our games. We'll let you go in just a second, um, Keir. Um, did you rate uh, the ginger perennial substitute... Perry Groves highly yes, what as think a, of Perry Groves as a, as, a, as a player in the late eighties. I um, I liked Perry. I uh, I thought he was great, and I watched him live so many times from the terraces. So um, I was a fan, and it was always that sub role, that coming on, you know, yeah, yeah. Almost, always sub, quite often, always yeah, sub. quite often in a game which was really beyond saving. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I, I was a big fan. I was a big fan. All right, well, let's play. How tall are they? Here yeah. we go. Uh, so this is an exhibition game. Joe Shannon is still world yeah. number one because it's normally winner stays on, Sakir, but I imagine you might, might that be might be an issue with you. you won. Um, <laughs> also, so quite, it is, it's quite uh, a bit dangerous for you to play in a proper game, I yeah, think, as well. Yeah, so, absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so look, it is, how tall are they special? Uh, Keir Starmer versus Perry Groves. Welcome, Perry. 
Good morning, boys. How are we doing? No, very well, thank yeah. you. Good morning, Perry. Good, thank you. Good, good. Uh, and Sakir, you definitely booed me when I was even sat down. With <laughs> 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 you can hear that. Oh, no, uh, not him. <laughs> OK, so here's how the game works, just in case you're not a regular listener to the show, uh, Keir. We give you five players uh, and all you have to do is guess how tall they are. You won't yeah. believe it, but it's actually a popular radio feature. Um, <laughs> you have to get it spot uh, on. If you don't get it spot, you get it spot on, spot you do on, not score any, not any points. Yet. It can be a nil-nil draw. Um, let's play. Here we go. Uh, you get the honour of going first, uh, to Keir Starmer. Dennis Bergkamp, how tall is Dennis Bergkamp? Scorer, you th- his best goal, you think, the Newcastle goal? I'm not sure he totally meant that, but but that's beside the point. Um, how tall is Dennis Bergkamp? I'll always say he meant it, but it was a brilliant goal. Yeah. Mm. Um, it was I'm going to go for 5 foot 11. Perry Groves? Dennis, I think he's bigger than what people think. I think he's 6 foot 1. Oh, six foot six right foot. in the middle. Still nil-nil. Still oh, nil-nil. Nil. Six foot. Perry Groves, how tall? Is Ian Wright? How tall is Ian Wright? Ian Wright is five foot nine. Five foot nine. So Keir Starmer? Five foot ten. Five foot ten. Five He's five foot nine. It's one nil. Oh. Perry Groves. <laughs> Perry Groves, one nil up. Starmer knows nothing. Here we go, <laughs> Keir Starmer. Um... Per Mertesacker, how tall is Per Mertesacker? The BFG. S- Answer the six, question. Six. <laughs> six five. Six five? No, maybe oh. six six. What is he going? Six six. Six six. Oh, I think my fit. I'm going. BFG is, I think, six foot five. He's six foot six. He's it's six one foot apiece. It's one all. all. It's one all. Um, I, I just, Do you know what? When I first took my boy uh, to football, when he was, he was, he must have been only about eight at the time, and obviously Mansaka was there. There was a chant about a big yes German, mm. and I got all the people around us in the stand to say "fuzzy" at the top of oh, their voice. How lovely! Uh, uh, it didn't last long. No, I can't imagine. No, when when, when Mourinho, t- Mourinho turned up on the next <laughs> game, and there was no no disguise in that. Here we I go. I fear I made a noise there, Charlie. Well, I, think no, I, no, I think the game it was fine. No, I think it's fine. Okay, it's fine. one all. It's one all. Here we go. One all. Uh, Perry Groves. How tall? Michael Thomas. It's up for grabs it's now. Up for grabs now. It's up for grabs now. Michael Thomas. Tomo is. Five foot ten. Five foot ten, Perry Groves, Sir Keir Starmer. Five foot nine. He's five foot ten, it's two one. Five foot ten, it's two one to Groves. Groves. It's unbelievable. He's losing he's <laughs> losing the election at the he's last minute. It. Can you believe Six it? Six to one on to, to losing. Here we go, right? Uh, finally then, uh Sir Keir Starmer. This is for the draw, so replay next week. How tall is Perry Groves? Perry, Perry Groves. Groves, how tall Groves. is Perry Groves, Sir Keir? Five ten. Perry, how tall is Perry Groves? <laughs> really? On Wikipedia. Five foot nine and three quarters. <laughs> He's five foot eleven. He's but five it is a two eight. one. <laughs> <laughs> two one to Perry Groves. Well done. Is that my Cuban heels? I've never yeah. been five foot nine. <laughs> Not a bit of wiki. There we are. I listen, Wikipedia, that's what we have to live by. Um, Sakir, thank you so much for your time. We really thanks appreciate it. Um, Thanks for having uh, me. I hope you had a nice time. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks for having me. Um, and good luck at the game this afternoon at Arsenal versus Palace. Live on Talk Sports, Sakir will be there. Uh, it is worth pointing out, we have asked Rishi Sunak, we have asked Ed Dave if they'd like to do the same thing. We are waiting their responses. Um, after I've listened to that, who knows? But uh, Sakir Starmer, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.